Are we seriously about to get a PlayStation 5 Pro, a more powerful version of the PlayStation 5, or possibly a PS5 Slim, a tiny version of the PlayStation 5 that's going to be slightly cheaper? These are the rumors that have been sort of going around, and I want to talk about them because parts of this seem correct, and parts of this seem incredibly fake. What's up gamers, Dreamcast guy here, and as a lot of you guys know, I am a very big fan of the PlayStation 5. I'm glad I got one day one, and now, for this first year or so I've had it, it's been very impressive. From exclusives to third-party stuff, it's just a very well-balanced and fun system. But the biggest problem of it has just been the scarcity. Trying to get this system requires complete luck, complete tryhard, like it's just so difficult. Even today, I actually saw this, which is the fact that they're still doing these. PlayStation is basically having these like Sony lotteries where you have to get in line digitally for a chance to win the opportunity to buy a PlayStation 5. In this current environment, it's strange to be talking about the next system, but I think there's a reason for that. Now, let's begin by taking a look at this. PlayStation 5 Pro could be coming next year. A baffling rumor claims that Sony is currently working on a PlayStation 5 Pro console that could arrive as late as 2023, which means that we're about 16 months from whatever this mythological new console is. Now let's skip a little bit of this fluff and go down here to the good bits. The report originates from the YouTube channel Red Gaming Tech, an outlet that covers PC and console hardware news with a reputation for AMD scoops. According to Red Gaming Tech, Sony is currently developing a PlayStation 5 Pro console with a tentative release date for late 2023 or early 2024. Another source told them that 2024 was the correct time frame for the PlayStation 5 Pro. Now, this is incredibly shocking to hear because honestly, the PS5 is already a very beastly system. Anybody who's played something in 4K or seen the instant hard drives of these new systems, like straight up, the SSD on the Xbox Series X and the PlayStation 5, like we're currently in a completely new generation of gaming. You certainly feel it when you're playing these games. So the idea of them trying to go things one step further in just such a short span of time, this seems peculiar, but let's take a look at the actual details. Looking at the details of this article, it sounds like they're straight up trying to double the power of the PlayStation 5 outright. The PS5 Pro's standard performance should improve around 2x over the PlayStation 5, while ray tracing performance could improve to 2.5 times better. The AMD chip is said to be built on the company's 5NM process, The one source did say it could actually be using the 4NM. The PS5 Pro's goal is to have a reinvigorated focus on ray tracing as well as a robust support for its virtual reality headset. Now honestly, I think that this is part of where these rumors are coming from. Right now there is the Game Developers Conference, GDC, and there's been a lot of talks about how Sony is there and they are talking about the PSVR 2. They are showing off the next generation of virtual reality, and assumedly, they're trying to coax in game developers. That's the whole point of GDC, is basically saying, hey, come over and make games for us. Come to Team Sony and basically, you know, make all your biggest and best games on our platform, right? So it would make sense that the closed door talks, the secret meetings, could be talking about this PlayStation 5 Pro if it exists. Now, here's the thing. I am of two minds. First and foremost, I completely believe that a PlayStation 5 Pro will exist at some point. Game developers are perpetually trying to invent the next big thing. I'm sure within their labs in Japan, there's somebody right now that's holding a controller that's attached to a PlayStation 5 Pro. But the difference is about the things that currently exist in a hypothetical sense, in a prototype fashion, versus the systems that are actually being prepared for launch. I think that the PlayStation 5 Pro is probably a long way away, mostly because this entire console generation is very different. Now, I want to talk more about that, but let's just dig into the PlayStation 5 Slim rumors. 
there have been a lot of these going around. A lot of people are talking about the fact that Sony is in a little bit of panic mode. Not outright, but the issue is that they want to be selling more PlayStation 5s. Every PS5 they make instantaneously sells. That's why there's just such a ridiculous demand. That's why scalpers are selling every PlayStation 5 they find for double or triple or even quadruple the cost. PlayStation finds are incredibly rare, and the person this hurts is Sony themselves. Well, that's why I completely believe the rumors of this PlayStation 5 Slim is because honestly, right now, Sony likes to make micro versions of their consoles, something that is just slightly more efficient, slightly cheaper, slightly easier to put together. Because right now, the problem they're having is that in order to make these big, glorious games, it's expensive, it's pricey, and it seems like it's incredibly time consuming. But there is some relief. So part of the reason I believe these PlayStation 5 Slim rumors and why I'm so hopeful about them is because of articles like this. Basically, AMD is saying that they're going to be making a lot more chips in the second half of 2022. What is causing this console rarity is not laziness. It's not mismanagement. It's not supply lines. It's this. It's mostly just the fact that there is not enough AMD chips to get out there. It's not like there's just not enough AMD chips to get consoles built, to get them running, to get them just constructed. So the fact that the people who are making these chips, AMD is saying, all right, we're going to be able to make the guts to the PlayStation 5 a lot easier in 2022. I think that it's very likely that a year later with development and stuff, I completely believe that we're going to have a PlayStation 5 Slim or some sort of like cheaper micro version of the PlayStation 5. Five. Now, I think it's not going to be that much smaller because the biggest thing that creates the PlayStation 5's bulk is the cooling of it. The system requires a lot of heat to be shooting out of its delicious snatch. So it makes sense that it needs to probably still be decently sized, even if they do slim it down somewhat to make a budget version of the system itself. Now, to go back to the PlayStation 5, I think that's part of the reason these rumors have been just sort of springing up is because of the PlayStation 4 Pro. Remember, the PlayStation 4 Pro came out three years after the original console did. There was the PlayStation 4, the Pro was revealed and launched relatively quickly three years after that. I think that they're expecting the same thing again. The PlayStation 5 came out in late 2020. They're sort of predicting that we're going to get a PlayStation 5 Pro three years after. The big difference, though, is obviously just the seasons have changed. Like, just consider the fact that the PlayStation 4 was incredibly popular straight out of the gate. People were buying it, the console sales, the software sales, the online sales, everybody was straight up handing every penny they could over to Sony. Day one. Whereas the PlayStation 5, it's a bit more of a trickle effect. It's difficult for me to actually surmise, but it seems like Sony is still in a space where they don't want to trip over their own feet. They don't want to spend, you know, tens of millions of dollars trying to make this new console that may end up Ouroboros eating its own market. I still think we're going to get a PlayStation 5 eventually. Down the road, it's going to exist. But as it currently stands, I don't think it's coming out next year. I don't even think it's coming in 2024. I think that that's like a 2025 idea. Now, I want to end this video with some thoughts by you guys, which is that I did this poll over on my Twitter account, and uh, it kind of gave me results that I wasn't expecting. I've seen a lot of people just down in the comment section talking about the fact that a lot of games are still cross-gen. They're not super desperate to get the PlayStation 5. They're not going to wait outside of a Walmart for like five days to try and get one. Like a lot of games are still coming to the PlayStation 4 and to the Xbox One. Well, I said, how do you feel about the Xbox Series X in 2022 and the PlayStation 5 with the, the selections here of I want to get a PlayStation 5, I have a PlayStation 5, or I'm waiting till later. I am shocked by the amount of you guys who do have the next-gen systems already. Now, I don't know if that's just because you're the hardest of the hardcore gamers. I'm not sure if it's just because of the dedication to the cause, but I'll be honest, I am shocked at the amount of people that do have the PlayStation 5. So I'm glad that all of us are team next gen. My biggest hope is still just the idea that this is all going to become 
My biggest hope, my biggest hope, though, is still just extra accessibility. More of these systems, more of these consoles, more people out there ready to buy this stuff whenever it finally becomes easy to get to. But these have just been some off-the-cuff thoughts. Real quick, actually, just as a joke, check it out. I platinumed Elden Ring on the PlayStation 5. I am extremely happy about it, but thank you for watching this video. If you could, give this video a giant thumbs up, share with your friends, and subscribe if you haven't already. But do me the biggest favor of all, and keep dreaming. Yeah, PlayStation. Thanks so much for watching that video. If you want to see something else, you can always click this link to see what I put up last or, you know, subscribe and see what's coming up next. Also, I promise that whatever I do, it'll try not to suck.